Hello again and welcome to One Cricket Exclusive. My guest today is an international cricketer with over 8,000 career runs, 500 career wickets and at 41 he's still making those runs and taking those wickets as captain and coach of Italy uh, as well as for North Hans. Born in Cape Town but with an Italian passport, he is very much a cricketer of the world. A very warm welcome, Gareth Berg. Hi, thank you for having me on. Uh, well, we're de delighted to have you. Now, <laughs> I'm going to ask this question carefully, but I can tell you in advance, I'm 63. So, um, but I've got a list here. Tim Murta, Jimmy Anderson, Darren Stevens, Michael Hogan. Does cricket somehow reverse the ageing process? <laughs> I think I think with cricket, if if you if you stay fit, um, you certainly become a better cricketer the older you get. Um, you start finding ways that that work in your game and in your favour to help the team. But I think the the key to it all is is just trying to stay fit. I certainly think the longer you play the game, you're going to get better at it. Surely. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a, clearly a lot of technique in there. Well, let me take you back a bit, um, and perhaps tell us a little bit about where you're kind of personal cricket journey started what what first got you into the game um it was my mother's side of the family so my grandfather was was a king cricketer played at the highest level in club cricket in south africa um and his sons who are my uncles uh, introduced me to cricket probably at around two or three years old so about three years old was the first time i got given a bat and, and a ball playing out in the back garden i was throwing a ball i hit it over the fence at three years old and uh, my uncles realised we might have something special here, so they pushed me at quite a young age. Ah, and an, and an all rounder as well. So it wasn't just hitting the ball over the fence; it was stopping other people hitting it over the fence. So yeah, exactly. I, I, I had some really good times um, at a very young age playing cricket. You know, I think when was it? I was about nine years old when I scored, I scored my first hundred at school level. Um, I think I still hold the record for the youngest and the most runs in one innings at my junior school um and those times sort of you know i revert back to those a lot of the, uh, those times a lot you know when when i'm going through a rough patch and just remembering how fun cricket was back in those days you know that's that's one of the most important things about being a professional cricketer is is, is still having that fun aspect to it uh, well it's certainly fun watching it um what brought you to the uk uh, and, a, and a career in um in county cricket how did that come about uh, yeah i moved i moved over when i was pretty young just outside of school um i was involved with the western province setup as a as a teenager and um i was involved with the b side which is like second team 11 second 11 cricket but i relied on talent all the way up to about 20 years old um i wasn't a hard worker at the game i never put in the extra hours or, or the extra net sessions so purely relied on talent um, and the coaches eventually gave up on me on that side of the game. They said, you know, we've had enough. We need you to work harder. We're going to look at other people. So sort of let me go. Um, decided to get away from it all and move to the UK and see what it's like to play a bit of cricket. Yeah. I had no idea how to get into the county setup. Um, all, I, all I knew was at some point I want to become a professional cricketer. So I had to find jobs, uh, to play a bit of club cricket. I did really well at club cricket. And I was hoping that at some point someone would pick me up or see see my performances. Well, and they, and they did. And they did. Uh, well, your career in England kind of gone through an interesting cycle, really. You started at Northampton in 2004. Then you moved to Middlesex in 2007. Then Hampshire, where from my recollection, you seem to make a speciality of, of making runs and taking wickets, particularly against Middlesex. But I haven't got the stats in front of me to back that <laughs> up. Uh, now back at Northampton. Are you still enjoying it as, as much as you ever did? 100%. Um... Obviously, I've had limited games this year uh, with North Ends, but mm. you know, when when I do play my club cricket down the road, yeah, or for Italy, I've previously, you know, when I first started playing for Italy and playing any sort of club cricket, it wasn't a mindset. It was more just I was turning up trying to do my best. But certainly now, in the last year or so, I'm running in harder. I'm trying to score more runs. There's there's more focus and emphasis that, you know, I am the pro. I'm the one that needs needs to lead by example. So, yeah. I'm almost killing myself to take wickets and score runs at at another level now, which which shows that I've still got the desire and you know the the fire in the belly to to perform at all levels. 
well, I'm sure Italy and North Hans are, 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 are grateful for that. Um, now, your career path wasn't always predictable. Uh, didn't you didn't you work as a tree surgeon and um, for chance to shine for a while before Middlesex picked you up? I, I used to work. Um, I worked for Chance to Shine in Hertfordshire for for a couple of years. I, I ran probably I looked after about six schools All right. during the calendar year. Um, two or three senior schools and three or four junior schools, um, which was fantastic. You know that sort of. I've been a coach since I left school, so that that was easy work for me in the sense of giving back knowledge and helping kids, you know, transition from school level cricket into club cricket. So I had a big passion about trying to find that pathway for for cricketers to move from school into clubs, um, because as you know, club cricket we 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 sometimes struggle with youngsters coming through straight from school. So that was uh, one of my passions, mm-hmm. and certainly one of my favourite jobs. I probably ever had was being a tree surgeon um (laughs) it was the camaraderie with the guys that i worked with and also you know being a south african being outdoors climbing trees and you know it was a fantastic job and and it kept me fit Uh, i was lugging big logs of wood around and working in the in the cold winters you know freezing my fingers and but uh it was certainly a fun time wow would you ever go back to that do you think yeah, certainly. I think, you know, if, if if things weren't going my way in terms of the coaching front and, you know, opportunities in that, I'd certainly look at, at something similar to that again, you know, as a part-time job. Yeah, well, let's hope it doesn't come to that, at least for a yeah, long time. Too, um, yeah. Now, you joined, uh, uh, selfish interest in this question, but you joined Middlesex in 2007. Three years later, uh, you'd average 42 with a bat, 20 with a ball, and helped them into Division 2. Um are there anything about uh, highlights of that season that do stick in your mind? Yeah, I mean, I think that was the year that I might have um, had finger surgery. So I missed a bit of the, the season and then came back, back end of the season. Um, highlights of that, that was obviously the Leicester match, yeah. the last game of the season, um, finishing it off with a 6-4-6. Six, six. Uh, I've got it tattooed on my arm, which reminds me of a past. That's why I asked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that's a highlight of my career. So, um, but certainly playing with with the bunch of lads that I played with in that year. You know, Chris Rogers was was instrumental to to my cricket at the time that he was there. He was a yeah. fantastic was. person to be around, and um, you know that year. I begged, I probably begged to come back and play in those last few games. You know, I wasn't supposed to, but I, I, I sort of sat down with the coach at the time and said, I am ready to go. I think leading up to that, that period at the back end of that season, I played a couple of club games and second team games. And I think I scored about three or four hundreds in five days. So I was 130 good, at Leicester from. Yeah, five, yeah. So I went into that I game in good form. Thing. So that was that was great. I think the game before the Leicester one was a Glamorgan game where I took five wickets. So I came back hot, and thank God it was you know hot because it it helped towards you know getting us into Division One. It did. I can also recall from that it was a huge partnership with Tim Murta. I'm sure if I was interviewing Tim, he'd go, "Well, that was all down to me." But yeah, I remember it was that. About 170 actually. I, I actually forgot think. about that, but now, now that you jogged my memory, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Well, okay, I'm going to move on very soon to um, uh, Italy, but uh, at the end of that 2014 season, you had that shoulder injury, uh, left you on the sidelines for much of that campaign. I mean, I don't want to dig up old wounds, but but I always uh, felt we, you know, there's a body of us Middlesex fans used to call you the Cape Town Crusader because we used to <laughs> enjoy watching you play for Middlesex so much. Um, and we were really disappointed when you moved on. Was it was that a tough time to have to to? to go? It seemed that you were moving because because of the injury somehow. Where maybe you obviously yeah, you're no more than me. That was a hell of a tough year. That um, first of all. It was, you know, people get it wrong. It wasn't an injury. It was, um, it was an infection in my shoulder. Yeah. Um, I had an abscess that burst in my capsule, um, which was caused by cortisone injections. So I think it was one in twelve thousand. And uh, that that popped where in that first game of that season, I think it was against Knots at Lords. Um, I dived for a ball and I heard a big pop in my shoulder. 
And about 24 hours later, I was in bed, you know, for about two weeks. I lost about eight kilos in, in those two weeks with infection. Um, it ended up being obviously an abscess that burst in my, in my capsule and it was sepsis, you know. So I, I required about seven operations in two months to get rid of it. Uh, real tough time. Um, and on the back of that, you know, the, the surgeon said I probably wouldn't bowl or throw a ball at any sort of level again. So, yes, Middlesex made a, a business decision, you know, on that, um, which at the time I was really frustrated about because I, I did say to them that, you know, give me till pre-season, I'll come back and play again, knowing the desire and drive I have in order to play cricket. Um, but it also shaped the rest of my career, I think, you know, and not just career, uh, life outside of cricket, the way I approach things now, you know. I certainly don't take no as an answer anymore with, with most things, you know. I always question things now and I always try and push. And I'm not afraid to go out and, and, and push for things uh, in order to, to make life better for me or my family. <clears throat> well, that kind of leads us on quite nicely, actually, because there's plenty I could ask you about. Uh, your career in the county game but but <coughs> you were of course coach um and captain of italy um so let's just let's take that point of you know the additional determination not taking no i mean does being a coach of a of a developing associate nation does that does that mean you have to think kind of more laterally more creatively be more determined to sort of to to, to put cricket on the map yeah, certainly. Um, I, I spoke to my president, current president now, a couple of years ago about the opportunity of taking over as coach, and he was all for it. Um, more so because, you know, I have a desire and, and I want to push these guys to be the best they can. And I think Italy, with some of the recruits that I've made over the 18 months, you know, for the national team, I think we're in a good position um, going forward. But also... I, I took captaincy away from the current captain at the time too, because I didn't want a captain on the field with the head coach on the field. I didn't want him to worry about making decisions mm. uh, during matches and things like that. And I wanted one straight, straight line to, to any sort of management, which was through me. And I was happy to take all the brunt of it. You know, if, if we weren't doing well, if we were doing well, I'm quite happy to take all that pressure. Um, I'm not trying to take the glory, uh, I'm certainly, you know, I'm currently looking for a current captain for the future. Um, so it's not going to be me. I just want to steady the ship and make make Italian cricket, you know, move in the right direction without any pressure on my players. I wanted them to go out and perform naturally and me to be the one that sort of, you know, takes takes all the pressure off them. Well, we're going to talk a bit about some of the games coming up and the, the tournaments you're in, because mm. I think it will help people to understand a little bit about the process you know everyone knows about australia and england and india and lord knows you know <laughs> but 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 it, it's kind of interesting the games that go on to get to up and up through the different levels but let me let me start if i may just by um kind of taking you back again again i think you played your first game for italy in 2012 am i right is it was it that far ago it's in dubai yeah wow and you have an italian passport um which, remind me which side of the family is the Italian that's, side? That's my family. mom's side of the family. Oh. Um, my grandfather on my mom's side. Yeah. Okay. And for, and so that's the best part of 10 years. In fact, it is 10 years. Yeah. Um, what have been the real highlights so far then for um, in your Italy career? What, what really stands um, out for you? There's been, a, there's been a few highlights which aren't highlights to, to my management. You know, uh, okay. we lost out in the, in the T20s last year, October, in Spain. Um, that, you know, for me, that's a highlight of my career in Italy as well because it sort of shaped me as a coach for the nat national team. We didn't, mm. we didn't get through that uh, tournament through net run rate, but I certainly learned a lot through that. Um, playing with Michael Divinuto, um, back in the day in Italy, uh, we opened the batting. That was fantastic. But um, I suppose also this last tournament we played in Finland, we walked away, you know, victorious playing every game and winning every game. 
which, you know, in that situation, every, every game is a World Cup final for us. Uh, we have to get through those tournaments. Um, but seeing the, the attitude and the development of players over the last 18 months has been fantastic. And it all came down to that one tournament, you know, a couple of weeks ago, which was fantastic for me to see. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I can't help notice that um, you know, you've won your last six games as captain coach and five of them i think were in that um uh group one as it was it yeah the world t20 sub-regional qualifiers you beat you thumped the isle of man um that was a uh, presumably because it was there's two groups right and isle of yeah, man yeah yeah so, one, one one so that was kind yeah. of the final with you um you pretty much i wouldn't say strolled through that one but they, they were all <laughs> by and large Big old wins from what I can Decent, recall. Yeah. Uh, you'd also beaten Croatia, Sweden, Finland and uh, Greece. And then not long before that, you'd been playing in the uh, World Cup qualifier. So sort of the yeah. CWC challenge where, funny enough, you'd beaten Bermuda, but you hadn't gone so well in the games prior to that, had you? No, no. Although one thing I did notice, I, <laughs> there was one name playing for Bermuda, opening the batting, I think, Camus Leverock. And as soon as I saw that name, um, I'm assuming he's a little bit slimmer than his uncle. Is he? <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah he is. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, and is he, am I going to be seeing him next week as well? <laughs> yeah, he should do. I think he's, um, he might be the skipper. So I think he's the captain of the oh, leader. But um, yeah, that challenge league was tough for us. Um, yeah. We we didn't quite hit our straps in terms of uh, the consistency that I needed from my bowlers and and batters. But since that tournament, we've given given some programs to the bowlers to go and work on and and also the batters to just keep hitting balls. So hopefully next week. But in saying that, we, we've lost, well, I wouldn't say we've lost, we, we've gained eight different players for this tournament coming oh, up wow. next week right. in, in our squad of 14. So that's, that's a huge change for me and my management. But um the guys that are replacing the guys that played previously, you know, hopefully they'll they'll step up to the plate. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that. So um, let's just just unpick the two tournaments a little bit, if 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 we may, to help people who probably don't follow it as uh, so so closely. Um, to me, those T20 games seem to suggest perhaps that you were, you know, playing, shall I say, a, a little bit above the level of the opposition there of course yeah so what, what, we went in we went into the tournament as favorites um we have played a lot more cricket than the other nations have but um in saying that in a t20 game on astro turf it can be anyone's game still um so for me it was all about you know uh, bringing home for the players is understanding that you know what is required by each individual in order for us to win as a team mm. and we can't veer away from that sort of discipline um, even though we're playing against a team that's we should win on you know 99 percent of the time um, we still have to stick to our disciplines and win big you know not just turn up and try and win a game well uh, you certainly did did do that uh, you qualified top of group one one four out of four then you thumped the isle of man so what's next for italy then on the on the t world t20 qualification road having got to that point where what comes you know, next? We're, we're currently waiting on on the scheduling for next year um mm -hmm. it looks like the globals which will be your germany your denmark's um possibly in norway or yeah. Finland maybe even and then um, a couple of the the bigger nations that don't you know qualify or make it in the World Cup or you know make it through the rounds in the World Cup next year or this year sorry uh, well certainly wishing you well with that um, then in the CWC Challenge League the going did seem to be somewhat tougher <laughs> yeah. um, you'd lost to Hong Kong Jersey where we will both be <laughs> uh, Kenya and Uganda before you beat uh, Bermuda. So you finished fifth in that group. Doesn't that mean realistically in this coming round starting next week, you pretty much need to win every game? Yeah, it certainly does. Um, I set my team out, you know, to obviously win every game. Um, it is going to be tough. We need to be realistic as well. So ideally I want to finish third in this table. 
mm-hmm. after this round, you know, the last round now, um, which means we have to win a couple of good games there. Um, but I certainly still believe, you know, we've we've recruited a few more players that have started. They played in Finland with me now, a couple of uh, three Aussie guys um, who bring a huge dynamic to our team. Um certainly on the batting front and one of them being an all-rounder, which helps me with my bowling, you know, as a, as a partner. I'm hoping that these guys turn up next week and uh, we can maybe, you know, upset a couple of teams. But we'll take it game by game. Yeah. Well, and you start against Bermuda, who you do at least have the recent record of having beaten Camo Leverock and all. So, yeah. I, um, I mean, ideally we would like to play Bermuda last because... yeah. You know, the slightly weaker team, or they are the weakest team in the group, um, to get them at the back end, and again, and back end of a tournament where they've lost a few games. You know, hopefully their their mindset's slightly different too to the first game of a tournament where they might think they they're in for a chance. So, but we've got to hit our straps either yeah. way. You know, Bermuda yeah. are quite a dangerous team on their day too. Well, uh, yeah, as, as I'm sure a lot of people will recall. <laughs> yeah. Um, what take, taking sort of a, a broader view, a bigger picture, perhaps? What are the realistic aspirations for Italy, or perhaps a Germany, Denmark, Hong Kong? I mean, I recall you saying once that the long-term goal for Italy would be to qualify for the Olympics. Um, is that still what, where do you see? I mean, I guess yeah, the question course, is yeah. how far can you take Italy, and where is where is a, a, an end point where you could look back and go, "That's what we wanted." I think, you know, realistically, in five years' time, there's no reason why if the Olympics do go ahead with cricket um, in 2028, I don't see any reason why Italy can't make it into the, into the Olympics. Um, we have a couple of guys that are, are waiting to have their turn to play for Italy. Uh, they're just, yeah, you know, doing their probation sort of time outside of international cricket, so which is usually three years. But a couple of these guys are about a year and a half just over a year away from from making their debut for Italy, which bring in huge experience for us moving forward. Yeah, don't I don't want to fill my national team up with you know guys from all over the globe in five six years time. I would like my domestic players to step up, um, but the the only way my domestic guys are going to step up is if we start playing more cricket in a calendar year. I need these guys to be playing more cricket on grass wickets. Um, and at some point, you know, in the two, three, four year time period, if I'm still coach, obviously, um, I would like my squad to be a good mix of domestic players, you well, know, at least 70%. Yeah. I'm definitely going to come on and talk about some of the, the star players and, and the issue of uh, or the challenges of re- re- recruitment. Mm. But I've got kind of a question that sort of leads into that, I guess, a little bit. Uh, I'm a risk of, I don't want to be political, not in the left, right wing sense. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Um, but as a as it, it, does Italy count therefore as an associate nation? Is that how you, is that your overall yeah. status? Yeah. So <laughs> my question to you is: um, with something like six billion in rights being poured into the game for the something like the IPL, should do you do you as a coach and clearly trying to grow Italy and with all of those challenges, do you feel that more should filter through? to help those sides who are trying to develop the game in places it's played less. Yeah, 100%. You, you're, you're fading all the way in the, your answer there, Gareth. Uh, can you hear me? Can yes, hear me? that's much better. Thank you. No, no, 100%. You know, the tournament in Finland, I got to speak with most of the players, uh, a lot of the coaches, the management staff. Um, they all came and had a chat with me, which was nice. And we all spoke about cricket and developing the game. And the challenges that these nations have who aren't quite in the position we're in, you know, their funding is minimal, real, yeah. really, really minimal. And the desire for them to be better and to play more cricket is phenomenal. You know, these guys have the bug. They want to play cricket. They want to be better. But the funding just doesn't allow them to do tournaments, you know, little quad- or quadrangulars or tri-series between nations. It costs money for them to do these things. Yeah. And that all comes out of their budget, which – you know, the, it's a double-edged sword for them because, you know, if they go and do a tri-series with, with two other nations, they're using up most of their budget to go and play a friendly. Um, and then when it comes to the big tournaments, they have hardly any budget left. So 
I would love to see more money coming into European cricket, not just European, but all the smaller nations too. Well, yeah, because I put you in. A at the end of the day, we we all a family. We all want cricket to, to develop, you know. Um, and certainly, you know, with cricket Italy as well, you know, we 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 on a strict budget ourselves. Mm. Well, I, you're preaching to the choir, Gareth. <laughs> but I'm, I'm delighted to to hear that answer. Now, you, you've talked about recruiting, and you've talked about local talent and you've talked about international talent i mean your role as i understand it does very much include finding and recruiting players um two notable names out the county championship grant stewart and jay dernback how do you go how do you go about <laughs> going i think you've got some italian in you somewhere <laughs> what, how, how does that process work that you pick out a grant or a jade to to uh, to play I've, for Italy? i've known i've known jade's had his or you know italian side for most of my career so it was always there um it was about finding the right time to approach him um with grant obviously bumped into grant in county cricket a couple of years ago and found out that he was too uh, we've got Emilio Gay at North Ants. He's got his passport now too. And um, <clears throat> there's a couple of guys around. Joe Sarrow, who was at Sussex, opening bowler. He's also been recruited. Um, but it's all about just speaking to coaches and players and finding out you know, who does. Um, one or two coaches have approached me and said, we've got a couple of Italian guys or this guy's Italian, whatever, in our squad. And then it's about approaching them and finding out, you know, whether they want to come and play at all. But with the county players, it's difficult, you know, for us mm. to, to recruit them to come and play for us during a season. Um, it's not easy. Hence, you know, the limited options or limited playing time for, for Grant Stewart. Jade's no longer a player, but uh, He's certainly a coach, a bowling coach at Middlesex, wasn't he? Or, yeah. Or yeah. Still is, I think. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, but, I mean, you've certainly had some, notable performances in those recent matches which i guess you'd expect given that the, <laughs> you'd had some success yeah. in them some names popped out at me uh like marcus uh campopiano mm -hmm. uh i think he played for sussex twos you've got anthony yes. Mostga, uh kishan kalogamagni i'm sure i said that yeah wrong, Krishan, I'm guessing Krishan, of, yeah of, uh, uh, yeah. south african oh so, sorry sri, sri lankan did uh, mm. uh, I not easy to pronounce yeah no. <laughs> I, you know what? I had about three practices of it before we came up together, and I still cocked it up. Um, so, t tell us about one or two talents that you've got there that you're kind of excited about, and that you, that you think will be central to taking Italy to sort of the next level. Yeah, I mean, we we got uh, a player like Krishan, who's an all rounder. Um, he's a lower order whacker. Uh, he's, he's only a, he's a skinny little lad, but he hits the ball as clean and as far as anyone I've seen. Uh, which is fantastic. Um, so in that sense, we're trying to develop him into a guy that can clear the ropes um, mm -hmm. more consistently. We're trying to fit a game plan around him and trying to to set him um, a more disciplined role in, in his role um, in the sense of it's not about trying to hit everything out the park. You know, it's picking the right things, the right balls. But he's also a talented leggy, off he can both seam, He's just one of these guys that, you know, is a fantastic athlete. He's listed Anything as an offie you... on Crick Info. So you've, yeah. you've, you've already alerted me to an additional string to his bow. Uh, yeah, exactly. He's, he's, he's also a very good leg spinner. But um, he's just one of those guys, any sport in front of him, you know, he, he's pretty pretty easy at, you know, doing anything like a like a duck in water. But um, the Moskers, yeah, they certainly add a bit of firepower with the batting. You know, yeah. very good players from Australia. And young Harry Manenti, who's the brother of Ben Manenti. Mm -hmm. um, Ben's at the Sixers, I think, or was at the Sixers, but now with Tassie, maybe. Um, but Ben's also another one, you know, that we recruited along with Harry, but uh, just with limited options at the moment, uh, limited time to come and play for us. But at, hopefully at some point, you know, we'll have someone like Ben Manenti too. So but our domestic your... players, our domestic players are yeah. very good players. Um, there's a lot of talent there. A serious talent but it's it's the lack of cricket you know that they 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 struggle with so when you come into a big tournament playing five big games within 10 days you know we, we're talking about fitness uh we're talking about mental awareness strategic planning of games where they field and things like that which 
they're not quite used to. They're not up to the standards we need them to be yet. But, you know, myself and Kevin O'Brien, we, we're working very hard at trying to trying to adapt, you know, these players and, mm. and trying to push them into a professional setup. So you have Kevin as, as coach, a uh, joint coach with you, is he? For, yeah, so he's yeah. currently he's currently joint coach with me for this year and we, we'll see what happens afterwards, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that's that's um, that must be quite a dynamic. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's know, great. You, you, you know, I mean, there. between us, we've played a thousand professional games, so... The guys have a lot to learn from us and you know in in hindsight we have a lot to learn from them too well, let's, let's reverse the question actually um so you know part of that question was where you go to find players and both local and international if you look at your charges across both t20 and um 50 over game who would you pick out if a county came to you and say we want to give a young lad more cricket who would you pick out as saying would really make it in in the English county game. I mean, I know Marcus, I think, had played for Sussex twos, hadn't he? And, and one or two others hadn't. But of those who haven't necessarily yet had that chance to play regular cricket at the top domestic levels, who would you pick out and say could could definitely do it? Um, someone like Christian, I think, is a very good player. Um, if he gets more cricket and more coaching behind him, I, I certainly think he could be a really good player in in a county setup. Um, uh, a JP Mead has all the talent as well as all rounder, mostly a batter. He mm. plays up in the in the northern leagues and does you know he he bosses the club cricket leagues, which is fantastic. But mm. with him, there's there's a struggle to to get into a county setup as he would be classed as an overseas apparently. And counties, you know what they're like with overseas. You know they won't they won't take anyone that's from really associate cricket. They want they want big names, um, which is a shame. Um, it's a shame the laws are that way. You know because you have someone who plays associate cricket who could probably set himself up in a county setup. Um, but uh, Campo Piano, like you touched on him, you know, yes, he has been involved with a bit of county stuff, but he's been a fantastic recruit for us as well. Mm. You know, his mindset, he, very professional. You know, he comes from an SNC background too. Um, so he's, he's very um, clinical in, in the way he prepares for cricket and he's got a good brain on him too. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward. Uh, hopefully, I'm looking forward to seeing him. Is he playing both formats, T20 and um, 50 over for you? Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, he's he's not available for for Jersey um, through through his cricket with Oxfordshire. Ah, okay. Mm. Um, so, what's next then for Italy once this round of matches in Jersey is done? Um, where 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 does where do Gareth and Italy go next? After that. Well, we need to have a debrief. We need to have a chat after after this tournament and sit down and see what our calendar year, you know, what lies ahead for us. Um, we have, or I've just been speaking to the Spanish head coach and the German head coach. <clears throat> We're trying to tee up a quadrangular in Spain in November, hopefully, between ourselves, Spain, uh, Germany, and possibly Bahrain. Um, which, you know, these sort of quadrangulars and mini tournaments are fantastic for my development players, or not development, my domestic players with development players. You know, I won't bring in my overseas players for that. You know, I need to have a look at more players that are under pressure, you know, the domestic guys, and see where we're at as, as, a, as a big squad. But once, once the calendar year is done, uh, we need to have a look at what lies ahead in big tournaments for us and preparation you know for that what do we need to do in order to be the best we can for those tournaments well, i think i've noticed one cunning ruse in in your plan and that is basically everywhere you play is somewhere really nice <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> or kind of geographically interesting place, places so yeah. maybe development cricket but you don't play it in some nice places that, that's got to be a bonus my, wife, my wife my wife gets a bit jealous about it too yeah oh, no oh, does she not come with you oh no 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 we, we've got too many kids to to fly around and things like that but um i'm bringing my family over to jersey for the first week so they're going to come on a little holiday oh road. well if, if i see you which i hope yeah, i will yeah, i, I I'll, will i'd love yeah. to say hi uh yeah. um, so what about you personally then i mean we know you've got jersey we've heard a little bit about going forward for you personally gareth how do you see the next couple of years 
shaping up? Are you and Italy tied together and you're going to take them as, 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 as far as you can? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, speaking with the president, I think he wants me around for a five-year period um, leading on from this year, um, which is fantastic. You know, I've always had that desire and drive to push Italy as long as I can. Um, but obviously, you know, with county cricket, not too sure where we're going yet myself. Um, I certainly, you know, performing well at the beginning of the year. I still have the skill, desire and fitness to play Red Bull cricket. So I would like to play at least another year. Um, I still have that drive to do that. And it'll be a shame, you know, if it doesn't work out. But, you know, there's other options with obviously Italian cricket. I have my own cricket coaching company and um, club cricket around the corner and also minor counties, you know, things like that, which, which I haven't approached yet. But certainly Italian cricket is, is on the forefront well, to spare your blushes for a second, let's just remind any county coaches listening that Gareth has a healthy 32 average with the bat in the championship this year and has taken 12 wickets, including, I might add, a very decent five for against Yorkshire if I got my background research right. So um, he's still very much firing on, on every single every single cylinder. Um, now, Gareth, you, just to, to sort of wrap up a little bit, I guess, you, you mentioned your family. What, what, what um, When you're not driving Italy forward and you're looking at um, uh, the political structure and trying to gain investment and find players and, 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 and really make that happen. Um, what, what does Gareth do when he's just hanging out and chilling and not playing cricket? I wouldn't say I, wouldn't say I chill much, but <laughs> with all the kids, but, um, you know, my chilling is obviously, you know, spending as much time with my kids as I can. Um, we, on a daily basis, are always outdoors. Uh, we're always at the beach or in the forest walking, um, parks, letting them ride their bikes. Um, for us, as a family unit, you know, it's all about our kids. So Fantastic. every single minute of every single day, we I wouldn't say we try and entertain them because they know how to entertain themselves, <laughs> but we yeah. certainly try and teach them, you know, about life outside of the house. Yeah. Well, I uh, uh, good luck with all with all of that uh, a reminder for everybody that next week i think on the fourth in jersey if you want to combine a really lovely place for a holiday by the way uh, with watching some really interesting cricket and supporting italy and these other other nations um it starts on the four runs from the fourth to the 14th i think uh the world cup group two games are will be played in two locations in jersey um and it's a fabulous place to visit and you'll see some great cricket at the same time. In the meantime, uh, a good luck and, a, and a, a big thank you to, to you, Gareth, for uh, chatting to us at One Cricket. Thank you so much. I also wanted to say I reckon next week's uh, tournament, which is the last phase of a three tournament phase, I think this is going to be the firecracker one, you know, because it does come down to the last tournament where teams are going to be fighting for those spots. Um and it also, you know, funding comes from that. So the teams are going to be fighting hard and this one's going to be the tough one, I reckon. Um, a tough one in a beautiful place, even though saying that, you know, Uganda, the pool of Africa was a fantastic place also to yeah. be playing the cricket. But yeah, I'm no. looking forward to the challenges. Yeah. Well, fantastic. And the very best of luck. Gareth, thank you so much. Thank you.